y'all so i am officially under the weather so been taking care of a sick baby over the past like four days or so and the ick finally got me as in the sick so um i this video is redoing day 15 video because youtube said what the hell so we're talking about heartbreak y'all heartbreak to it i have five ways to when you're living through heartbreak and five ways to cope with heartbreak so let's get into it i got my phone right here so i'm just looking off the stuff on my phone i'm looking off what i wrote on my phone okay y'all so number one is sit with the hurt but don't lie down. So I'm a very firm believer that when you go through stuff, you're supposed to feel it. You're not supposed to just be like, I'm going to be strong and I'm going to think about it and I'm going to press through it. No, you need to sit in those feelings and acknowledge that you're having those feelings. I would say you can sit in them, but don't lie down. We don't want to get into a depression, but we do want to sit and acknowledge that something traumatic happened. We just got our heart broken. So you can sit with it, but just don't lie down. Cause we're not doing depression we're not doing we we're, we're trying to be above depression and i know it's easier said than done taking it from somebody who was in it for three years straight so trust i know not through the heartbreak but still it was three years of depression number two is acknowledge the loss and don't be delusional about it so don't sit and say like okay you know what well, we broke up but you know we go through this and we'll probably get back to it no acknowledge that y'all broke up and it's a very firm possibility that y'all won't get back together i always feel like if you break up with somebody and y'all get back together y'all probably gonna end up breaking up again i mean not always but y'all probably gonna end up breaking up again so don't try to sit and psych yourself out and tell yourself like, okay, well, you know, no, it's not, this is not the end. It's not going to end like this because sometimes it does end like that. Sometimes it does just abruptly end. And it sucks, but it is life. And life is about learning. And it's a journey. And we're going to learn on this journey. Number three. Acknowledge your role. Acknowledge your role and or part in a breakup. Whether it was you ignoring the red flags or excusing poor behavior, whether it was you being mean, not being understanding or being nice and being too understanding or not bending and bending too much. Acknowledge your role because sometimes there are, well, all the times there are signs when after the breakup that we pay attention to where it's like, dang, you know what? I shouldn't have let that slide. I shouldn't have ignored that. They literally told me that this is what it was and I wanted to ignore it because I didn't want it to be there. So it's like, no. You need to acknowledge the part that you played in it so that in your next relationship you don't play that part because we're not playing no parts when we get our heart broke. That's, that's not, that's not what we're doing. Number four, I ain't done all day, y'all. I had no appetite. Number four is make time to take time. So, take time being by yourself after the breakup. I know, I know, I know. People say, oh, you know, the best way to get over somebody is to get under somebody else. Yeah, that might be cute and, and cool in your 20s, but when you get older, you need to be alone for a little bit. So that you can really take a complete look at the relationship and be able to pinpoint the things that made it right and the things that made it wrong and the things you're going to want in your next relationship and the things you simply will not settle for. It's hard to determine those things when you immediately jump into another relationship to get your mind off of the last relationship. So yeah, no, we're acknowledging, if you notice the pattern, this is all about acknowledging that a breakup has occurred acknowledging that the trauma has happened and living through it like dealing with it head on so that you don't take that into your next relationship because this is not an airport and nobody wants your baggage nobody wants your baggage so yeah well, i'm firmly believe that if you don't deal with the traumas of your last relationship you'll attract somebody with those same type of qualities and they'll add to the baggage that you already have and it'll be the same type of baggage but worse so we're not doing that. It's not an airport. 
we don't want we're not giving our baggage to anybody and we're not taking nobody bags either number five number five is my lifetime staple number five is my lifetime staple no closure is closure babe it was abrupt it was hurtful it was sad you want this you want that it didn't happen you didn't get the closure and that was the closure no, you don't need them to explain to you why they did it. No, you don't need them to apply. You might want those things, but you don't need them. You might want them to be able to acknowledge that they hurt you, but but truthfully, so the person who's breaking your heart or the person who's breaking up with you and they're not giving you closure, they don't care that they're hurting your feelings. They're leaving. They're not, they don't care about that. They're caring about them, which self-preservation is always key. So I'm not really mad at that, but you can't expect somebody that doesn't care to care in the moment that you're caring. And we are much, much better than that. Much, much better than that. I know when you, when it's heartbreaking, you don't get closure. You have a million questions in your head about it. But sometimes you just have to deal with the fact that you're not going to get closure and deal with the fact that it ended the way that it ended and deal with it. Sometimes they'll just, it'll just end abruptly. And that's, that's the sad part about it. Relationships are a gamble. And you're going to win some, you're going to lose some, babe. And that's okay too because did you really lose or did you gain knowledge about the things that you will and will not accept so um now we're gonna go to ways to cope after a breakup so one thing that you could do is if you're the type of person that likes to write stuff out you can um, you can journal like i said you might want to talk to nobody but writing those feelings out just getting those feelings out your head and on paper, even if you never read it again, just to be able to say, okay, they're not in my head anymore. I don't have a million things going through my head. No, I wrote, I wrote some of them out on paper. That helps, especially when you look at it down months down the line, when you're not feeling the same way that you felt that day. And you can say, these are the things that I was feeling. And these are ways that I'm, I'm not going to feel anymore. I'm not going to allow somebody to do this to me. I'm not going to allow myself to be put in these type of positions. So journaling is a very good way to write out um, your feelings just to get it out your head. Because when it gets in your head, it gets jumbled and that gets compacted with other things. And it's every day is something new because, you know, when you're getting over heartbreak, it's a roller coaster. Some days you're beautifully fine and you're like, ah, it's nothing. And then other days you'll get like a whirlwind of emotions that'll come over you and you're sad. If you cry, you cry. Or you might uh, feel like you're getting into depression and things like that. So it's like, it's a roller coaster. So you want to be able to write those feelings out so that you can better acknowledge and understand what you're feeling instead of just leaving them in your head. And it's also easy to cope with it. Um, Number two way to cope is to talk to yourself out loud about it. I do that. Now this is not just with heartbreak. I um I tend to not and a lot of people say this is a trauma response, but I don't know. But I tend to not go to people when I'm having specific issues. A lot of times, a lot, a lot of times I will talk out loud to myself about it and I get resolution that way. Um you would be surprised the information that will come back to you just by you speaking out loud speaking those things out loud, the answers that will come back, the resolve that you'll be able to get um, on your own, just talking out loud about it. Um, my mom always say, you can talk to yourself out loud, but just don't answer. But sometimes, sometimes the answer will come back and you'll, you'll have to be thankful for the answer out loud because it's like, oh dang. And sometimes you'll find resolve talking to, your, talking to yourself out loud or talking things out out loud that you won't get talking to another person. Because sometimes when you talk to another person, you'll tend to have a little bit of a filter. But when you're talking to yourself out loud, it's no filter. It's like, this is what it is. And, and I, I did a lot of ego checking just by talking to myself out loud and being like, okay, but what part did you play? Because everybody likes to blame other people for the things that they go through. But a lot of times you have to sit with yourself and be like, okay, but what part did you play? Even if your part was just allowing that person to feel comfortable enough to cross boundaries like that. So I love this. Um, talk to yourself out loud about it. It works. Number three is... Now we, we all get into this mode when you've been when you've been with somebody for a while and then y'all break up, you always get into that space where you feel a little bit better about it. And you wanna try to make it work. 
Well, you feel like you want to give it another try. Remember the betrayal and the hurt more than the good times. So if you're sitting and you're choosing to focus more on the good things about that person rather than the fact that they had you sliding down a damn wall, that ain't the way to go. You want to be with somebody that had you feeling like that? You want to go back to somebody that had you feeling like that? You want to go back to somebody that had you sliding down a the wall, then care that you were sliding down a the wall, then give you closure and had you sliding down a the wall, but then when they felt like they wanted you back, you went back. That's not the type of person that you want to be, but I don't care how long y'all been together. So you want to remember the betrayal, remember the hurt more than the good times, because when you get your heart broke, that should outweigh the good times. It, it really should, in my opinion. That should outweigh the good times because any person that will put you in a position to break your heart, any person that will put you in a position to be sad and down the way that a lot of people are when they go through heartbreak, that's not nobody that you want to circle back to. That's not a circle back kind of person. So that's the type of person you want to you wanna leave to the side and say, hey, we, we had some good times. We had some good times, but... If we, even if we had a, a thousand good times and five bad times, because that heartbreak was one of the five, I'm not, I ain't going back. Trust. This coming from somebody who, with one person, one or two people, I've done that rodeo around and it's ended the same way every time. And that's me getting my feelings hurt and not being with that person no more. Don't, I did it twice. Y'all don't do it once. Don't do it once. When, when, when that heart get broke, just... Go ahead, go ahead, get up out of there. We not, we not doubling it, okay? That's what we're not doing. We're not doubling it. So, number four is putting yourself in the mind frame of and understanding that it was their loss, not yours. It's their loss. It's not yours. A lot of times people be like, "He was the best thing that ever happened to me. She was the best thing that ever happened to me." No, you were the best thing that ever happened to you. You were the best thing that ever happened to them. Sometimes people are so used to dealing with trash people that when they get a unique person, they fumble it. They don't know how to receive it. They don't know how to keep it. And when you are a genuine person, it's their loss. It's their loss. And I always feel like when you get your heart broke or when you are separated from somebody who you thought you were supposed to be with, that's the universe's way of telling you that that's really not nobody that you were supposed to be with. That was somebody that you were supposed to gain lessons from. So gain the lessons. You're not gaining lessons if you go back. That's not how lessons work. That's not how life lessons work. You don't you don't get your heart broke and then go back and get your heart broke again. Then go back and get your heart broke again and go back and get it's like that. That's not you're not learning the lesson. You're repeating the lesson. It's meant for you. Y'all y'all would still be together. You you wouldn't be going through the heartbreak. So, yeah, sometimes people do realize what they lost in the end, but even if they come back and like, I realize what I lost, I realize, I don't need to be saying all that. I realize what I lost and I made a mistake. Yeah, you did make a mistake, and I'm glad that you do realize what you lost. So when you get in your next relationship and you meet somebody that is not as fantastic as me, but is pretty fantastic, you will take these lessons that you learn by losing me and apply them to the person that you're going to be with next because it'll never be me again. So that you make sure that you don't fumble the bag again. You might get the chance to get another bag. It, it won't be this bag. It won't be this unique bag that you are. It could be another bag. You know, it, it's gonna be alright, but it ain't gonna be. It's not gonna be the original. You don't. You don't. You can't mimic the original. Many try and they all fail. So understand that. Number five. You got you to gotta block them. Block and purge all across the board. A lot of people are like, I'm not going to block you because I want you to see my greatness. They don't care about your greatness. Are you crazy? They broke up with you. You think they're sitting around like, I broke up with her. Let me see how great she's doing. No, some do. Some men do that. Some women do that as well. But no. Pull that energy back. And when I say block, I mean block. I'm talking always and always. I'm talking what I put, I put on here. Phone, social media, email. Y'all got Duo, Duo apps, Messenger. Getting rid of certain items. T-shirts, sweatshirts that they had that you feel like you look better in. Clothes that they bought you. You got more clothes. Shoes that they bought you. 
Now I don't know. I don't know how people might feel about that, but you know, if you could spare us to, if you could spare to separate with some shoes, go ahead and throw them out. You you need to get that energy out because I do feel like. As long as you have stuff lingering about that person or from that person, those feelings are still going to be there. What we're trying to do is we're trying to get over and through the heartbreak. That's going to take time, and so it's baby steps. So what you want to do is you want to try to purge as much as possible during the heartbreak process to kind of make um, getting through it a little bit easier. So, in closing... Heartbreak is never easy. So in the meantime, focus more on living through the heartbreak and getting behind the heartbreak as opposed to getting over it. That's gonna come in time, y'all. So, see you guys tomorrow for Vlogmas Day 16.